making a movie physically and mentally destroys you. You know, it just, it just does. It becomes such a labor of love that sometimes we neglect to look at it as a business. People lock into this idea that there is a correct way to do things. There's not. There's a million ways to do it. Video has become the most effective way to get people to do something that it is you want them to do. It's time for filmmakers to get real with Jeffrey Michael Bayes and Forrest Day Jr. Welcome back to the podcast. We are talking about finding investors today. And if you'd like to contact us, tell us what we should be talking about on other shows. Tweet us at Borges Film or email info at Borges.com. Be sure to subscribe and leave us a star rating on iTunes. We're uh, constantly building our fan base. We have Blondie in Florida so far. Yeah, we're uh, we're up to one. We've doubled <laughs> the number of people since we started. Well, we have a lot of subscribers on Podbean. I've noticed uh, we keep adding people there. So, yeah, I've been trying good. to talk my mom into subscribing. You know, like <laughs> and she's like, "What?" I go, "Mom, my podcast. What? What's a podcast?" On the show today is Tom Malloy. Uh, he's raised over twenty-five million dollars total in his career for indie films. Now that that's that's not very much, is it? Uh, well, I wouldn't mind having twenty-five million dollars. Yeah. Then I could afford to go to Starbucks every day. But what what surprises me about him is that he only raises money from people outside the film industry, like furniture salesmen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's where he that, gets that, his investors. That, that, so we're, yeah, but it makes sense. Yes, you know, you get people who aren't, uh, you know. Who, who, who will be interested in a film project who aren't involved in film projects. Yes. We'll be right back with Tom Malloy, the author of Bankroll, a new approach to financing feature films. That's one thing Alfred Hitchcock was really good at, creating suspense with a camera. For the last couple of years, I've been teaching Hitchcock suspense techniques at festivals like Buffalo, St. Louis, Palm Springs, Los Angeles. Filmmakers are learning easy tricks for building suspense that are so easy to implement. Now there's a way for you to get access in my new book, Suspense with a Camera. It's available in bookstores now. And don't miss our free docuseries on YouTube called Hitch 20. have a very special guest today. We're talking about film investing and where to find investors. Tom Malloy is, I would say, one of the top experts in this. He's the author of Bankroll. He's also an award-winning actor, producer, public speaker, and he also recently starred in the film Hashtag Screamers. Is that how you say it? Do you say the hashtag? It is. You do say the hashtag, yes. Okay. <laughs> Tom, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me on. Definitely. Please. Yeah. Happy to be here. Now, I, I want to get into this investment thing because this is something that everybody uh, wants to know about. Where do you find the money for, for these films that we're making? And what struck me in your book is that you find people that aren't in the film industry. You say some of your investors have been, like, for instance, a furniture salesman, a poker player from Vegas, a guy with a rich uncle. So where do you find these people? <laughs> There's uh, It's very simple. I just go to a website uh, called filminvestors.com. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, it's funny. You said most of the investors, it, truly all of the investors had not uh, were not people uh, in the film business. And I always say that is that if you are making movies and, you know, you have a, a level of skill at that, that's a unique trait. And so what you have to do is you have to find the people that are outside, you know, that they made, uh, you know, $30 million making desks and that's their business. And that's, you become the conduit for them. You know what I mean? Because they don't, they don't have a website or an 800 number if they want to make a movie. And, and so many people want to make a movie. So what you're doing is in effect becoming the person that's, 
you know, bringing that world to them. And so that's that's the way I found it. So, I mean, there's rich people everywhere in every industry. But what's cool about that is it opens up any industry. You know, you can't say, well, I only want to focus on that. You can say I'm, I'm looking for, you know, water manufacturers or people that make printers and blah, 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 blah. Anybody that's a high net worth individual, which is H&I, I use in the book over and over again. Anybody that's a high net worth individual could potentially be a film investor. And they want to grab onto the dream. A lot of people um, want to be part of the movie. So that's, in my mind, probably what you're selling more than anything, being part of something you normally couldn't be part of. Am I correct in that? A hundred percent. You know, it's like anybody can invest in Bitcoin and then uh, they can invest in in stocks and things like that. But when they're on the golf course and, you know, somebody said, oh, I just bought a warehouse or somebody says, I just did this. And the other person says, uh, yeah, I'm doing a movie with Jessica Alba. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, and she's calling me right now. Hang on. You know, like that's that's a very sexy investment, you know, and something very cool. And and, and people want to be around it. Now, how do you go about contacting these people? You just look them up in the phone book? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, no, I don't do that. I mean, a phone book? What's that? Yeah, well, I don't even actually know what a phone book Sorry, is. Sorry, I just dated myself. Sometimes at night I, I put on a record. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, and read the TV guide. <laughs> and I read the TV guide. And, uh, you know, yeah, and I put a VHS in. No, um, it, as far as, no, you, you don't, it, the key is connections. You know, you don't... Um, cold reach out to anybody i'm not i'm trying to think if i can go back and look at my life and and see if there's any investor that i connected with cold i I don't even know if there that exists for me Mm -hmm. but um what it is it's usually putting the word out there that you're looking to meet with high net worth individuals and i i use that kind of six degrees of separation all the time you know there's people that are just connected to that there's people that are around that but if I said to either of you, hey, listen, if you have anybody that you know that are high net worth individuals and you put me in touch with them, uh, you know, I'll make you an associate producer on this movie and I'll, you'll get paid a fee. So now I'm literally throwing out value to you. Mm-hmm. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm giving you, a, you know, a chance to be a part of a movie just by making, you know, hey, Tom, meet Joe. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, so I do that to everybody. I'm a, I'll do it at a bar. You know, I go up to somebody. Hey, man, what's it? You know, you're talking to somebody, what do you do? And it's, ah, I produce films. And hey, listen, by the way, I'm always looking for investors if you know anybody. I mean, so doing that, you 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 get connections everywhere. You, I mean, they're, they're always coming in just from that. And you can't just judge people like, oh, this guy can't help me or I can't help him. I, th- I think sometimes you got to... You just don't know till you talk, right? Just yeah, network. I, I just said that to literally just said it to my colleague today. I said you have to run everything up the flagpole. That's the term I use because mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta do it. You don't know. It's the guy with the you know that's missing two teeth. That's the eccentric millionaire, and uh, it's the person that's you know wearing the three piece suit that is the scam artist that doesn't really that that three piece suit is the only thing he has. You know what I mean? Like so. Uh, yeah, you really have to run it up the flagpole no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Just watch out for the all show, no dough guy. And, Cause they're, they're the guy that'll get you. Yeah. You know, it's, I found that it's very similar. Uh, I have a colleague that used to sell cars prior to becoming part of the film business. And it one day hit me that, you know, these investors that talk, 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 and then they've never actually put any money in. It's very similar to like, she was selling high end, uh, Land Rovers and, um, and Jaguars. And she, there was people that just came and they kicked the tires. And I'm like, I think there are people like that mm-hmm. in the movie investment world. They just want to come and check out the the Maserati, but they can't ever actually buy it. They just want to take a look at it. So that I think it's the same thing. But again, you have to run it up the flagpole every time. And the, what, the way I look at it is the worst case scenario is it's practice. You're going to mm-hmm. get a pitch out. And, you know, the more you pitch, the better. I'm like an expert pitcher. I teach classes at pitching. And it's not like I was born with this skill. I just I've done it so many times. And in front of so many people and in the, the worst spots and sometimes the most ideal spots. And you just get, you know, the more you do it, the better you get. So my obvious question here is, why do they have to be outside the film industry? What's wrong with the people in the industry? Um, well, most of them are on are on significant drugs like myself. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, the reason being is that most of the people in the film business are... It, it, and, and I want to specify that we're talking about independently financing film is that unless they're in like a studio where they can uh, green light a film and the key is there, they have certain parameters that they have to fill, like, you know, not no first time directors and, you know, no unknown cast and things like that. So their kind of hands are tied. 
The other people, it, everybody's looking out for their own self-interest. And I don't mean that in any negative way. I mean, I haven't worked outside the movie business since uh, 2001, I think, you know, so that you're doing uh, 18 years, only movies. And this is how I pay for everything in my life. I feed my kids. And I. It's the key is in the movie business, it's like, you know, you have to you have to be looking out for yourself, just like any other business. I, I just find it interesting that somebody would ask, like, hey, could you put my son in a movie? You know, and they do that all the time to mm -hmm. movie people. You know what I mean? But versus like, imagine if you were a doctor and I'm like, hey, can my son do open heart surgery for you? Like, can he jump in there and just do one of the like you would never ask that. But people ask that in the movies all the time. And so they don't get that there's working professionals that have parameters like, you know, like it, it, it's very tough for me to just take an idea out of nowhere and make it into a film. You know, it's like there's it, a lot of times it's just the, the things have to happen in the right way. The value has to be there. An investor comes to me and says he's looking for a sports film. And at the same time, you happen to send me this script about tennis that's brilliant, you know, and everything works out that way. But just kind of coming from scratch and pulling something up, it's very tough. And, and, and you, you know, you're always one film away from being in the poorhouse. And, you know, I'm not, I can't risk everything I have to fund your movie, you know what I mean? And everything in my life to fund your movie because you're passionate, you know what I mean? So that's why you, you stay out. You, you just, you go to people outside. What would you recommend to somebody who's a, um, obviously, you know, you have the gift to go up to people and talk to people. What would you recommend to somebody who maybe doesn't have that skill? How would they start doing this? I would say um, to get into a different business. <laughs> no, I, would right, say, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, there's a piece of me that does, think that, you know, it's almost like saying you're an actor and I can't handle rejection. It's uh -huh. like, well, then get yep. the hell out of the damn business. But, you know, I think that at the end of the day, anything that you do, uh, there's two things I'll say. Anything you do, the more experience you have, the better. So if you feel like, oh, I'm not good at talking to people, just keep talking to people. Keep talking to people. Sooner or later, you're going to be able to be great at it yep. and even get some type of flow going. But the other thing I, I'll say is that you know, there was a, I used to do motivational speaking for kids years ago. And it's like, there was this one guy I worked with that used to say, you know, why aren't there millionaires everywhere? He says, people have big butts and he doesn't mean the rear end. He means the word, butt. you know, like, yep. I want to, I want to, I want to produce films, but mm -hmm. I'm afraid to talk to people. And he said, all you have to do to be successful is just change one word. It's just change, but to, and I want to be a successful producer and I'm afraid to talk to people. You know what I mean? And you're going to do it anyway. So like, and allows you to just do it. I want to be a doctor and it's a lot of hard work instead of, but it's a lot of hard work. I want to be an actor, you know, but I'm shy means you'll never be an actor. I want to be an actor and I'm shy. You know what I mean? Like some of the best ever Robert De Niro, super shy person. You know what I mean? Like, so the key is don't let anything stop you from doing it. Um, and put the effort in. That's that's the, the the third thing I'll say is if you just go out there and do it. One little other quick story is there's I, I tell this a lot of times in seminars is that the difference between like a good salesperson and a bad salesperson and the good salesperson will make 100 calls and get 20 sales. Mm -hmm. The bad salesperson will make 100 calls and get 10 sales. But the bottom line is the bad salesperson is still making sales. There's a third salesperson, which is the lazy salesperson that will make five calls. Mm -hmm. And the, that's the difference is that it doesn't matter if you're good or bad. If you're out there, you know, kind of grinding away sooner or later, you're going to get results. Just get out there and be nice. Yeah. I, yeah. I, well, say Joe introduces you to Bob now. Step two. OK, you, you're sitting at the bar. Hey, I'm looking for investors. Hey, meet my buddy, Joe. How, what do you give for advice for that first meeting with a possible investor? Are they all different or do you have like a, a set of rules? Well, it, you know, it's, it, there are, there is a, a certain way to approach people. I mean, there's, there's, there's a whole thing. Like if you just say, if you said to me, Hey, I got an, a meeting with an investor uh, Friday. Um, well, it is Friday. Let's just say it's Saturday. Uh, and you, um, we're going to meet with that person. There'd be a whole, there, I can't just say, well, do this, that, and the other thing, you mm -hmm. know, because there's a whole thing of qualifying um, before you go in, like meaning trying to learn as much as you can about him or her before you go in there. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going in there with the, you know, this horror movie that may be a great pitch and it's about Satan and you're going into this, you know, this investor meeting and this guy's the most religious guy in the world, uh -huh. you know, you're not, I don't give a shit if it's the best project ever that makes the most sense ever, you're not going to get any financing, you know? So there's, there's pre things. And then there's also a pattern of talking to them where, you know, one of the things I also teach is 
to never um, go in and just immediately start pitching. You know, I mm-hmm. go into every meeting and say, hey, tell me about your business. You know, and if even if they'll say to me, yeah, give me your pitch. I'll say, wait, hang on real quick. And I'll, I'll point to some of the wall. Where'd you get that painting? And I'll start getting them talking about themselves. And I equate that as like kind of the first date. Mm-hmm. You know, if you went in there on a first date with a girl and you said, uh, let me tell you about me. And then here's more about me and then me and then me and then me, me. You know, you're not getting a second date, you know. So it's like if you go in there and you say, here's my pitch, blah, 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 me, 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 me. It's you're just not getting a second date. So they, there's all kinds of nuances and things like that. I can't give you a kind of the step by step approach quickly, but you know, there's there's a lot going into that meeting. You you just want to be on your A game. Well I know you can't give the steps, but right there, that was a piece of gold. Don't oh, don't you. talk about me, me, me. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> hey, that painting on the wall. That's something a lot of people wouldn't think about to walk into the room and and ask questions unrelated to the film. It, uh, I equate it to building a relationship. You're building a relationship before you're you're asking for anything a hundred percent you know i there's a uh, a great story that happened to me once just to, to piggyback on that which was i went to talk with an investor a potential investor and same thing i pointed to somebody he had some paintings of chess pieces mm-hmm. and we got into a conversation about chess now i know very little about chess but what i do know is i know a lot of i know a lot or excuse me, I know a ton of topics that I know I, I'm good enough to converse about them. I may not be an expert, but I can converse. I mean, you know, almost any sport, uh, things like that, you know, and, and this was chess. Now, at the time, I was looking for 250 or something like that extra for a film. And he, um, it wasn't right for them. At the time, it wasn't right for their company. And so that's fine. What I did is then we had this great conversation about chess. I did my pitch. He said it wasn't a good timing. That night, I went back and I went on eBay and for $7, I got a life magazine from the seventies that had Bobby Fisher on the cover oh, okay. and I bought it and I took it and uh, I, I got it shipped to me. I framed it and I sent it to him and I said, thanks for the meeting. Um, when I called on this person, maybe say two months down the road said, how'd oh, you get the chest? Oh, that was the greatest thing. It's on my wall, blah, blah, blah. Hey, come on in. Came in. I think I got a half a million dollars when <laughs> I did that. So I always say that that $7 got me a half a million dollars. And that was just truly, you know, commenting on a painting on the wall. So there it is exactly in play right there. It's also being kind and, and being observant to uh, around you, not being uh, phony, you know, yeah. Act- actually having an interest. That's what I'm hearing from this. Yes, it's true. Yeah, you're not think, faking anything. Like when I'm asking somebody about that and I'm like, that is the coolest story. I'm truly like into that story. Yeah, I try yeah. to listen with my heart. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah, And you can learn so much from people. Now, um, when once you get an investor and they do a movie and it's complete, um, do you tend to – are you tend to – um, are you able to get the investor back for a second movie or a third movie? Has that ever happened? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I have. I've done it where investors have d- invested across multiple films and even ones that sometimes didn't make money. You know, the mm-hmm. experience themselves, they were so into it or we were waiting on a film to make money. So that's happened. Um, you know, the key is, you know, and then there's been ones I remember the one that I made, I almost doubled his money and then he never invested with me again. Yeah, was like, yeah. That was his that was his one thing. And that was it. So, uh, you know, the key is it, if you, you know, people are always trying to worry about like if at the end of the day, the goal for me that I say is to make a great film as best I can Yeah. because, and I, I know I have so much experience in sales and I own a sales and distribution company now. And it's like, I'll do the best thing, the, the best attempt to make money on that movie, but there are no guarantees, <laughs> you know? So right. you never know. I used to call it movie gods. A lot of people call it movie gods. You never know what the movie gods are going to shine on. So, You know, at the end of the day, that's all you can promise is that you'll put the effort in based on track record and everything and try your best. But, you know, look, if if somebody says, well, I want to make my investor $100 million so that this person will keep giving me money. It's like, man, if you make your investor $100 million, you'll never have to look for an investor again. You'll be in the studio system. They'll fund your next five movies. Trust me. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, it it, don't worry about that. So, um, you know, whatever it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's a process, I guess. So is it easier to find investors now than say 10 years ago? Cause I know you, you mentioned in your book that the, uh, the economic crash of 2008, uh, really dried things up for a while. Yeah, no, I think it's harder now. Um, I also think it's be- it's not just the economic crash. I think it's people not buying DVDs. That was the biggest change yeah, for yeah. me. You know, when when people bought DVDs, you can make. I mean, I, I have friends. I have a friend that made hundred million dollars, 
And for 25 years, he made like the C-list Christian Slater movie. And no offense to Christian Slater. I'm just using a, somebody like that, you know, and he made those movies and he would make them for three million and he would sell them for six. You know what I mean? And like, that's what he would do. And you can't do it. You'll make that C-list Christian Slater movie for three and you'll make $200,000 today. You know what I mean? Like, so that's, that's the problem is that the, the money's not there in the streaming world that was there with DVDs, which were a physical product that you packed and shipped. So, you know, that changed everything. I, you know, in the first book, my range of movies was like three to eight. I think in the second book, it was like 500,000 to five. I don't even remember. But like now I wouldn't make a movie, an independent film over three million dollars. Unless I had Matthew McConaughey, you know, or, or I had a studio attached beforehand, you know, everything to me is like a million and under now, you mm -hmm. know, so everything changed. So let's get into that a little bit. What kind of qualities does a film have to have to attract investors? I, does it have to have an A-list star? Does it have to have a big director? Well, those all help. Everything helps. And, you know, in stars... It sell. I mean, you know, it's like in the sales world that the, in the foreign sales, they look at stars. That's like the first thing they look at, you know. And so uh, it, any of that helps. And a director obviously helps to bring some A-list talent to it. But, you know, look, the key is it's not only about the A-list talent, you know, because the A-list talent is great, but it's tough to get. The key is the B and the C-list talent. That really is it. I mean, if you're going to you're going to tell me you're going to make a movie for 250,000 and you're going to um, put all no names in it. I would say that's just a mistake because even for 250, allocate 25, 30 of that 250 and get somebody that was a TV star, you know, and, and is or is a supporting actor in, in a bunch of TV shows, somebody that has some name or face recognition, you know, and if you can do that, it changes everything. Now it's a real movie, you know, and I'm not talking about there's like three or four albatrosses like Eric Roberts and, you know, Tom Sizemore that they, they'll do it. All they have to do is you give them X amount of dollars. They're doing your movie. Like that's, I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about somebody that, that you can put in your movie that has value and internationally you can sell it. And I've done very well with those in the past and, uh, you know, and brought them in for 10 grand for one day or something like that. And they came in for one day and we treated them like gold and we were able to put them on the poster and then suddenly we were able to sell that movie. So th do they actually need to read the script or is it just based on the pitch and the star attachment and, and the excitement? Well, I'd say... Does anybody actually read scripts anymore? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, maybe you're, that's a good point. Maybe 20 to 30% read the script. You know, it's like the other ones, it's more about the pitch and the business plan and uh, the, your whole plan that you have, you know, like your plan to make money back, all that stuff. It's funny enough, it's all described in a lot of the stuff that I put online, not to go into a pitch or anything, but what I'm saying is that all the stuff that I put online has a step-by-step -step process as far as prepping your project prior to getting in front of the investor. Meaning, if you get in front of that person and you're not ready, you're probably not getting in front of that person again because they've labeled you as an amateur. And if they label you as an amateur, you know, just think about it. If somebody was uh, coming approaching you and they say, hey, can you read my script? And you read it. It was the worst piece of garbage ever. The sec second time that they came to you and say, hey, can you read my new script? What are you going to do? You're going to be like, oh, well, no, I don't know if I can do it. You because know, you've labeled that person in your mind as an amateur, you know, and then that's that's a mistake that a lot of people make just being unprepped before they get in front of that person. So. Mm. Now, uh, you said you didn't want to uh, uh, pitch yourself, but pitch yourself. What's your website? <laughs> Thank you. Well, yes, <laughs> all of this stuff. Uh, I partnered with a guy named Jason Brubaker, and a lot of people know that because uh, they either bought my business plan through uh, MoviePlanPro.com, uh, which is the, the the online business plan for for filmmakers that I've been using. It's the same one that I've used for twenty years or so. And then uh, we have a membership site called FilmmakingStuffHQ.com. So filmmaking stuff, and then HQ for headquarters. And that's the membership site where you can literally sign up and get access to every product we made. And when I say every product, I think there's, let me see if I can pull it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's 10 products that we've made plus the masterclass, which is basically bankroll everything that I know five plus hours on there. And so at filmmakingstuffhq.com, let's put it this way. If you wanted to learn everything you can about film, uh, I, I don't hold anything back. Everything is on there. So mm -hmm. there it is. <laughs> and your book is available on Kindle. I confirmed that. So if uh, folks are interested in reading the book, which uh, is in a second edition, is that right? 
Yeah, the second edition was written in 2012. Um, the reason I try to get people more to the website is because things changed even since then. Mm -hmm. You know, I was asked to write a third edition of the book, and I said, nah, I'd rather kind of focus on the online stuff now. And the reason being is that there, it, it's always fluid and dynamic, and it's much easier to just record a new video um, in the studio than it is to, you know, get a book and get it out to Barnes and Noble and get all the publishers and all that shit. Like that's, that's not as easy to do uh, and write another edition. So, mm -hmm. um, everything is online now. And, and that's all at filmmaking stuff, HQ.com. Yes. Filmmaking stuff, HQ.com or movie plan pro, which you can see some of the products and stuff like that. And, um, you know, yeah, check those, check those out. I mean, there's, I think if you go to bankroll your, I don't want to give too many sites, but I think if you go to bankroll your movie, you could see there's like free um, email, uh, like seven day email courses and things like that that are free, completely free, and just give you some tips on film financing. Okay, I'm writing all this down. That's why I, <laughs> yeah. I think I give you 18 sites there. Yeah. yeah, I'm running out of paper, but that's cool. <laughs> that, that's what we're here for information. Um, if someone wants to get a hold of you, is it through these sites or is there a way to, like, hey, Tom, I, I'd like to talk directly to Tom? Is there a way to do that? Well, um, you know, you can, my producing site is trickcandle.com, which is, that's my production company. Um, you know, I, I hate to say that it's, it's a little tough, but it, well, let's put it this way. I, I, um, used to, you're going back maybe like four years or so. I used to consult on movies all the time. People would hire me, yep. talk yep. to me and I do consulting. I unfortunately don't do that anymore, but I always have, I have producer friends that do that I farm it out to, like meaning if somebody said, I, I go, listen, I swear by these people. So uh, any any of those things that people reach out to me and they say, oh, I need help on my movie, I can point you in the right direction. I just don't do it personally anymore. I got you. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Tom Malloy, author of Bankroll. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for uh, having me on. Always happy to talk about movies. Well, that is our show for today. Next week, we'll have the Save the Cat folks. And then coming up, we have James Forsher. He's going to talk to us about getting stock footage and possibly even making money on footage that you have laying around the house. <laughs> Yeah, so footage that you that you don't even realize you have laying around yeah. the house. So it's that's the cool part. Time to dig out those closets. Mm -hmm. Get Real Indie Filmmakers is created by Forrest Day Jr. He's the host of Rolling Tape on YouTube. And Jeffrey Michael Bays is the author of Between the Scenes: What Every Film Director, Writer, and Editor Should Know About Scene Transitions <gasps> and Suspense with a Camera: <laughs> A Filmmaker's Guide to Hitchcock's Techniques. Hyperventilating. <laughs> yeah, <just> like <laughs> Forest Day, host of Rolling Get Real Indie Filmmakers is a production of Borges Networks, 2019.